In 1908, something bizarre happened in Siberia. On June the 13th at 7 a.m., villagers in eastern Siberia saw a giant luminous sphere flying through the sky. It was approaching with a deafening roar that sounded like thunder. A couple of seconds later, an around 40 megaton explosion occurred. Such an impact can be compared to the detonation of 2,000 nuclear bombs. The blast wave was picked up in various locations all over the world. The forest at the explosion epicenter was immediately set on fire. Most trees within 2,000 square kilometers fell. However, some of them remained upright for some reason. At the site where the alleged meteorite fell, there was neither a crater nor fragments. How could such a powerful explosion leave no trace? In this video, you'll find out what will happen if the Earth collides with a black hole. How many mosquitoes does it take to set fire to a forest? What is the Tunguska event really about? What if the Tunguska event is still a meteorite? A luminous sphere flying through the sky, a powerful explosion. It really looks like a colossal space shard that streaked through the Earth's atmosphere. But here's the thing, when a meteorite hits Earth, it looks like this. This is the meteor crater that was left by a meteorite strike in Arizona 50,000 years ago. That meteorite was three times more powerful than the Tunguska one. The impact force was about 150 megatons. The Arizona meteorite was just 50 meters in diameter, but it created a 230 meter deep crater, 1.2 kilometers in diameter. Then where's the crater that's supposed to remain after the Tunguska event? This is Lake Checo, situated 8 kilometers from ground zero. Its bottom is shaped like a cup, so this matched the idea that this lake likely appeared due to the Tunguska event, created either by the meteorite or its fragment. To check this out, in 2017, researchers conducted an analysis of the Lake Checo bed deposits. The lake turned out to be at least 280 years old. It's still possible it was formed by a meteorite strike, but definitely not the one involved in the Tunguska event. Then what could glow in the sky, bring a forest down, and leave no crater afterwards? Nowadays, most scientists think that it was an asteroid that exploded in the Earth's atmosphere. According to researchers' estimations, that could be a regular chondrite, a stony asteroid 60 meters in diameter. It entered the atmosphere at around 15 kilometers per second and exploded 10 or 15 kilometers above the Earth's surface. But shouldn't there be some fragments left after an explosion like that? Scientists found none of them, either in the ground zero area or at Lake Checo bottom. Another theory trying to explain the Tunguska event appeared in 2020. Sergei Karpov, Doctor of Physical and Mathematical Sciences at Kerensky Institute of Physics, believes it could be an iron asteroid. It went through the atmosphere at a certain angle, thus avoiding hitting the planet's surface and then returned to space. An asteroid like this could be a size of 1 or 200 meters, and its speed could be around 20 kilometers per second. It made its pass at an altitude of approximately 15 kilometers above the ground, hitting our planet tangentially. The blast wave that was picked up all around the globe could possibly occur due to the rapid vaporization of the asteroid's surface in the Earth's atmosphere. It was heated up to the extent of losing around 500 tons of substance per second. That explains the powerful explosion, the sphere in the sky seen by eyewitnesses, and even the absence of a crater or fragments. But an asteroid passing by Earth at that altitude couldn't cause a massive wildfire in the epicenter. Then what could it be? Eyewitnesses to the Tunguska event considered it to be a sign of the upcoming doomsday. 
Many locals left their homes that very day and became pilgrims or joined a convent. Whatever it was, the Tunguski events scared the locals so much that they stayed away from the scene for 13 years. And when in 1921 the first study group arrived at Ground Zero, they were met only by the fallen forest. Perhaps we shouldn't look for the cause of this event in space. It may be that the fire sphere in the sky spotted by the eyewitnesses was, in fact, ball lightning. Until today, this phenomenon has remained poorly studied. There were several attempts to produce ball lightning under laboratory conditions. Theoretically, it could explode above the ground and cause a wildfire. But it's unlikely that ball lightning could be strong enough to be detected halfway around the world. And still, the ball lightning version isn't the most absurd one. One of the Tunguska event researchers jokingly suggested that the explosion could be triggered by mosquitoes. If five cubic kilometers of insects gathered at the scene simultaneously, that could cause a thermal explosion. Its force could be enough to knock down trees, set the forest on fire, and even trigger a shockwave around the planet. Just imagine if the locals saw not a luminous sphere in the sky in the morning, but five cubic kilometers of mosquitoes. Who knows, maybe it's just a typical morning routine in Siberia. But even mosquitoes are not the strangest hypothesis advanced by scientists. In 1973, two physicists suggested that the meteorite that hit the Tunguska area was actually a tiny black hole. In fact, such black holes aren't uncommon for our galaxy. Some explorers even think they can be found in the Kuiper Belt, a circumstellar disk extending from the orbit of Neptune. Jackson and Ryan calculated that the size of a black hole like that had to be just 0.15 nanometers. For reference, a black hole weighing five times more than the Earth would be as big as 4.5 centimeters. Scientists assume that this black hole collided with Earth right where the Tunguska event took place, went through the planet, and came out on the other side somewhere around the North Atlantic. It's not entirely clear how a collision between Earth and a black hole would look like, and it's also unknown if anyone could see a luminous sphere, the explosion, and a wildfire if that were true. Other scientists repeatedly criticized and even made fun of this theory. The thing is, if a teeny black hole really passed through Earth, most likely it would leave a spot of molten rock at the entry point. 500 meters to 4 kilometers in diameter. Moreover, at the black hole exit point, anomalies resembling the ones that occurred at the Tunguska area would be detected. Nowadays, the theory about an asteroid that exploded in the atmosphere seems the most realistic to scientists. But it can't fully explain all the unusual events that simultaneously took place that day. But what if there's a different explanation? Hear me out. A massive scourge of mosquitoes was flying over Siberia, and just at that moment, an iron asteroid was heading towards Earth. They crashed into each other, and a powerful explosion created a tiny black hole at the crash site. It pulled in the fragments of the asteroid, along with the mosquito ashes, and went back into space. At least, this version explains all the weirdness of the Tunguski event at once. And what do you think really happened there? Write your hypotheses in the comments. Also, be sure to check out this video and find out what asteroids much bigger than the Tunguska impactor threaten Earth in the near future.